Imagine, my brothers in Islam, the most expensive and the best blessing that you possess. Imagine your most cherished gift. How would you treat this blessing and this gift? What protocols would you use when it comes to this precious blessing that you desire, that is of great benefit to you? Obviously, every one of us would treat such a gift with tenderness, with care, with love. None of us would intentionally misuse a gift that is precious to us. None of us would harm or damage or wreck such a gift. It is impossible to imagine a sane person doing so. Well then, what do we do in light of the hadith of the Prophet who told us what is the best gift that Allah can give us? Our Prophet ﷺ said, There is nothing that a believer benefits from more after the taqwa of Allah that is more beneficial for him than a righteous spouse, reported by Ibn Majah. How foolish then and harmful it is if a man amongst us abuses and harms that precious blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed us with. Remember when the Sharia came down, remember when Islam was revealed and the Quran came down, wife abuse and spousal abuse was rampant. Men would constantly beat and whip and lash and, 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 and slap their wives all the time. In that society, the Quran and Sunnah was very clear. And our Prophet ﷺ said in that authentic hadith reported in Abu Dawood in many books of hadith that a man said, O Messenger of Allah, what is the rights that my wife has over me? In a society where wife beating was common, what did our Prophet ﷺ say? That the rights that your wife have over you, when you eat, she is eating with you. When you have clothes, she has clothes with you. Meaning the point is, obviously if you don't have any money and you're hungry, well then couples have to suffer together as well. That's the reality. But you cannot eat and have her hungry. So whenever you eat, she has to eat. When you are dressed, she has to be dressed. Meaning you live, you have her live like you. The, the standard of living is going to be like you. And then he said, and do not slap her. Do not slap her across the face. Wala tuqabbih. And do not, and now we're going to have to translate taqbih over here. And do not abandon her except in her house. These are three things mentioned, right? Do not slap her across the face. And slapping was the most common type of hit. And the hadith came and forbade that. Do not do that. And then number two is tuqabbih. We'll, do, we'll, we'll leave tuqabbih for a minute. Number three, do not leave her except in her house. Meaning what? If you have an argument, if you have a fight, you cannot kick her out. You cannot tell her to go back to her family. Unless it's this divorce, that's a different reality after the three months. Otherwise, in every average dispute, and average couples have fights, this is the reality. If you're going to sleep separately, if you're going to, then you go and sleep in the living room, not her. And if it's even worse than that, and you want to leave the house, you go and get the hotel, not her. And this is, by the way, all allowed in Islam. Tempers flare, even our Prophet ﷺ, and to be fully honest here, even our Prophet ﷺ, marital disputes did happen, and he had to leave the household. Who slept in the masjid? He did. He slept in the masjid. So sometimes arguments get really bad, and yes, this is all normal, that okay, arguments happen, but you never kick her out. You want to go, you leave. She has to remain at home. And that's what our Prophet said, never abandon her. Except if she's in her house, then you get angry and you walk out, well then that's your business. But you cannot kick her out of the house. That's not what our Sharia allows. Now I want to get back to this phrase, wala tuqabbih. Because from this we get to the second uh, main type of abuse, and that is emotional abuse. We talked about physical abuse. Now we get to the second type of abuse, which is emotional abuse. What does tuqabbih mean? Tuqabbih literally means to make her feel ugly. To make her feel negative about herself. So the first part says don't hit her on the face. And the second part says don't demean her in a nasty manner. And this is the textbook definition of emotional abuse. This is the textbook definition of emotional abuse. That to make the person feel humiliated, degraded, to make them lose their self-worth, the yelling, the screaming that is done, the, the cursing and vulgarities. And so many men will not hit their wives, but their attitude 
is to qabbih. Their attitude is making the woman feel like she's worth nothing. And this is the textbook definition of emotional abuse. And our sharia as well forbids this. We are not allowed to treat a human being in this manner, much less our life partner, much less the mother of our children. And subhanAllah, what is really sad, brothers and sisters, is that all too often, these people who abuse their wives, they are the essence of hypocrites who have two faces. Many times when it comes to the masjid and the community, MashaAllah, they are sweet as honey. MashaAllah, they are the most generous and the most kind. But their friends and their extended family and their immediate family knows all too well what happens behind closed doors. The people that should love him the most and respect him the most, fear him the most and despise him the most. And that is why when you have such blatant hypocrisy, that is why our Prophet ﷺ said, the best man amongst you is the one who is the best to his women and children. Because this is the essence of sincerity. If your wife can respect you, then wallahi you are worthy of being respected. If your wife who knows your inner secrets and she knows exactly how you are, if she can vouch that this is an honest man, and our Prophet ﷺ had nine wives and every one of them admired and respected him to the utmost. That is what you call a true gentleman. That is what you call a model of akhlaq of our Prophet ﷺ. But when your wife and your children know you to be a fraud, then you are a fraud. Even if society puts you on a pedestal that is false. On the farewell khutbah of the Prophet ﷺ, when he only had five paragraphs to address the entire ummah, the most important khutbah of his life, addressed to the largest gathering of a hundred thousand people, on the plane that is the holiest plane, and on the day that is the holiest day, and he barely has five paragraphs, he dedicates an entire paragraph to women. And he addresses men because once again, typically it is the men who abuse the women. And he tells the men, nisa. Fear Allah when it comes to women. Fear Allah when it comes to women. Oh man, you will have to stand in front of Allah on judgment day. You think you have power over women? Allah has infinitely more power over you. And you will have to stand in front of Allah. And Allah will ask you how you dealt with your wife, how you dealt with your children. And our Prophet ﷺ reminded us, Ittaqullaha fin nisa. Fear Allah when it comes to women because you took them by the permission of Allah and you made them halal by the permission of Allah. In other words, it is a sacred contract. It is a covenant. The nikah is a covenant. It is a nikah in the name of Allah. And so Allah's name has been mentioned and Allah Azza wa will ask you about that.